I'm here with artist Kat Kerr, and she has brought this absolutely beautiful clear album, which you can see is full of all these pages that you can see through, lots of layers, pages of different sizes, thread. I mean, so many cool things, Kat. This seems really hard to do. Oh, no. It's super fun and easy to make, and I'd love to show you how to make oh, it. Oh, good. Let's get started then. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some paint to uh, a piece of plastic. And now, I'm do you have to use any kind of specific paint, or will any like acrylic paint do? Um, I've just used acrylic and it works perfect. So I- You are mixing colors directly on your brush. And I'm not even really, you know, trying to be neat about it. Now before that dries, I'm gonna remove some of that color by just taking an, a stencil and you can see I don't clean my stencils. I'm kind of a slob. I, I, I believe it doesn't harm the stencils if you don't clean them. And you're just using a baby wipe right through that stencil. Yeah. And I can see how it lends to that really nice distressed look. That's right. Right, and so what I do is I like to just let that dry. And okay. here's one that's already dried, but I still want to bring it up a notch. And I do want to point out, I was going to say that this is actually the other side. It's yes, a little bit it hard because it's clear. So mm -hmm. this is the side that you painted on, and we're going to actually be working on the opposite that's right. side. That's right. So I'm going to add some um, additional design by taking a foam stamp and working on the other side, and then I'll just press it on, and then I'll let it dry. So okay. foam stamps, I've always found are great when you're using paint as opposed to ink because they are easier to use with paint, I think, than like rubber or silicone oh, definitely. stamps. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then the next thing that I do is I just finish up this background by adding a little bit of white elements with this uh, paint marker. And it's just a little touch, so but it adds a lot. So how do you choose what white elements to add? Like I noticed you added some little dots here. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you know that that's the right thing to do? There's, no, I mean, it's whatever feels good. And if if, it, if, it's, if it's a shape that I think maybe needs a little bit more, I will go ahead and add um, some of the white marker to it. And then I just put that aside, and now I'm gonna go ahead and start on my embellishments So here's journal. my question, could you, I know we did use paint for this, but could you have used like a permanent ink that would be okay on a slick surface, or does it have to be paint? Um, I, I like using the paint. I think it adds, um, it adds texture to it. I mean, I, you know, I, the nice thing about this is that you can, sky's the limit. You can use whatever you have. If you have a certain thing at home, use that, try it. I like that you theory. Know, why use not? what you've got. That's right. So I went ahead and printed up some images onto this um, adhesive-backed computer film. And so wait a second, just, just so I understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. You have, it's like a sticker sheet. Right. But it's, cl it's clear sticker. Right, exactly. And you can now, can you use a regular printer, or do I have to have a laser you printer or a toner? You can use a laser or a um, inkjet. Ink that's right. Really? And, yeah, and it dries pretty quick. So, okay. you know, after a couple of minutes. Do you have to print your images backwards? No. Or it's if, just like a sticker? It's just like a sticker. Like this one right here has some text on it. So I just printed it up, let it dry for a couple of minutes, and it has the adhesive on the back of it. So I'm going to take, you can take uh, uh, vintage photos that you have and cut them out, and I'm going to embellish them just a bit by adding one of the designs that I printed up and I'll just place it directly onto this design and then I'll take a pair of scissors and they're right next to you if you can pass oh, yeah. them to me. So I'd love to know your tips on hand cutting, especially something that's sticky because that's something that I often have trouble. Oh wow, you just do it. I just do it <laughs> and I'm also <laughs> using scissors with a black coating and it makes it a little easier. Oh, like easier. a Teflon coating or yeah. something like that, okay. Yeah. And so as you can see on this one that I created, mm -hmm. I just trimmed around it and I added some um, some design to it from the images that I printed up and those embellishments are ready for me to use. So just so that I am clear on this, right, I can see that there's text here and mm -hmm. there's like a crackle here. And what you're saying is that these are are these two different they ones are. or the same one? They're two different images. I wanted the shirt to be a little bit different. That's so. cool. And and what is this? It's very dimensional. Yeah, I wanted uh, exactly that. I wanted a little bit more dimension. So I punched some little holes with a paper punch and threaded some some wire, uh, some some string. Again, just to add a little bit of dimension. And I have to point this out, Kat, because you have a you have an attitude about art that I love, which is very like casual and everyone can do it. Now I would get really scared about having to be exact around this, but I look at this, it looks fantastic, and yet I can see this doesn't completely cover, it's not really cut out of the center, there's part of the clear stuff that's hanging out, and because it's a clear sticker, None of it matters. I think if you're so busy worrying about that stuff, you're not really having fun. So just, I agree. <laughs> just yeah. go with it. Just yes. go with it. 
So these are some additional embellishments that I um, have. Uh, Will just, you show us how to make that? Yeah, absolutely. These are already cut out. Okay. Um, but you can cut any, any Die paper. Die cut anything you want. Cut it by hand. Absolutely. Um, I'm gonna add some red to this. Okay. I would normally let this dry. I kind of mix my okay. colors here, but that's okay. Um, I would normally let that dry, and mm -hmm. then I would add some splatters what of another color. What is your splat technique? Because everybody has a different way of doing it. My technique is stay away because it's gonna go all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I just add splatters to it, and if it gets all over, that's okay. I was gonna say, and I noticed that this is a very heavy paper, like a watercolor is, paper, right. and are you using that because when you use paint, it's important or could you use like copy paper? I mean, does it really, does your paper matter? I do prefer to use the watercolor because sometimes I'll add multiple layers of paint and so I do want something that's thick enough to hold it. Okay. Um, and because I want to bring these up a notch, I'm going to use some of the uh, images that I printed up mm -hmm. and I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'll just peel it off. This is one that I cut out from this sheet here. Well, I love this because you can personalize this now with a favorite poem, uh, a letter that somebody wrote you. I mean, I sometimes copy and paste some texts and stuff like that and put them into stuff because you want things to be really deeply personal. Right, absolutely. And this is one that I've already cut out. You can see it really is a nice embellishment to use yeah. in the journal. and I have to say, Kat, you've done something so clever, which is this is just a simple piece of wax paper and it means that when you're using the stickers, they don't they don't stick to your... Uh, exactly. And actually, that also means you could use the little scraps you cut off. I'm a kind of a hoarder. I like to save everything. <laughs> awesome. And you totally could, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So now that we have the base of the journal, we have the embellishments that we're going to use, we're going to go ahead and assemble. Normally I would go for glue in this case, but because this plastic is somewhat transparent, I want it to keep, you know, I want it to go mm -hmm. with that transparent feel. So these are the embellishments that I'm using. Um, you can use little pieces of threads. ribbon. So many cool things. Absolutely. Even this one butterfly, you know, I can put that on the back if I want. And then I'll take some clear packing tape if I can get it out. That's always the hardest part to me. Right? And I'm just going to press oh it on. Oh my God. You're blowing my mind. That is the easiest adhesive I've ever seen, and the tape just disappears Done. completely Done. into there. I'm I'm 100 stealing this idea. It's that a little is crooked, genius. but I mean, who cares? And you just take a little roller or a brayer or even your hand, and you just press that down. Make sure that it's on nicely. And I do cover the front and the back. So if I wanted to add this butterfly to the back, I mean, super fast and easy. And then I just make sure that I. Uh, wrap leave, those yep, edges. And I leave about a half of an mm -hmm. inch on the side so that I can uh, punch some holes into the plastic, add these little binding rings, and then I finish it off by adding some chain to the side. And you can see on the finished product that it ha you can add tons of embellishments to the sides. You can add some ribbon or trim, whatever you like. You can even make it a house that lights Absolutely. up. Absolutely, that's right. You can see how transparent it is. It's this great. This is so cool, Kat. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you.